Welcome to Maximal Being, a podcast devoted to ditching fad diets and using real science to get you healthy and feeling great. I'm Doc Mock, a GI and functional medicine doctor who harnesses the power of gut health to get you achieving your goal. And I'm Jackie P, a well-informed layman who challenges the experts and asks the questions that you want. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button or leave a comment. And now, on to the show. So, Dr. Varma, you know, we, we talked about things folks not to do for skin, right? And you've been working on this skin phage technology, right? Um, so, walk us through that, right? Like, is it just something that you just, you know, is it like you wash your face in the morning, you put it on? Is it a lotion, right? You know, it, I, I am not good at moisturizing my face at all, ever. I feel like my skin is naturally balanced, but you know, like wh- what are the applications? Is this someone who just wants to have healthy skin? Is this someone who's dealing with acne or rashes, right? You know, talk, walk us through, you know, who can benefit from uh, what you're working on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I want to give a little background about where this technology is coming from and, and how, we know scientifically that this will impact your acne, right? Uh, or, or your skin and keep it clear. So um, in 2016, there was a paper that looked at people with acne and people with healthy skin and really did a deep dive, you know, shotgun metagenomic analysis, which means sequencing all the microbes on their skin to figure out what is the difference? Can we pick out a difference between acne microbiomes and healthy microbiomes? And the other thing is they, they included a cohort, which is so interesting to me, of older people, because we know that acne is kind of a young man's, young person's disease, right? And as you get older, acne just isn't as prevalent. And we actually don't know why that is. <clears throat> what they found was the biggest difference between acne skin and healthy skin is that healthy skin contains these C. acne's bacteriophages, whereas acne skin is very, very difficult to find. What's also interesting is that as you get older, uh, older healthy skin has a much higher prevalence of phages on it than people with acne. So the hypothesis is that there are these organisms, these phages that just naturally occur randomly on some people and not on others. And you know, those annoying friend of, friends of ours who have perfectly clear skin, just wake up with dewy skin, never get a zit in their life. <laughs> Chances are they're carrying this microorganism that's just keeping their microbiome in balance naturally. And the reason why older people get less acne is that, you know, you, you touch someone's cheek, you brush against, you know, someone's skin and maybe the phage transfers. As you're older, you just brush against different people's skin and the chance of a phage randomly coming into your microbiome and, and, and grafting or attaching itself is higher. So you just by kind of life experience, I guess, uh, are more likely to carry that phage. So this it, finding is, is pretty like amazing. Um, and we decided, you know, let's democratize this organism. Um, you may not be born with it, but uh, everyone should have the benefit of this, this amazing microorganism and balance their microbiome without having to resort to harsh products or, you know, things that give you side effects. Wow. And by the way, I don't want to brag, but I am one of those friends. I always yes, thought I just yeah. drank. Yeah. I always thought I just drink a lot of water, but then I was told no, that's not that's not the only factor. But uh, that's interesting, and you know, and like like I said, I always like to look at the the possibility of the bad, right? If that's right, like is is it, is there a potential or is there a likelihood of there being bad, uh, you know, reactions, or is there, you know, like you know. Is there too much of a good thing situation, right? Is there like, hey, yeah, we, you know, we have no longer had this type of bacteria, but, you know, maybe this bacteria is good for like one thing, right? Is there anything on the other side of that that we should be thinking about or you already have thought about? <laughs> uh, well, so just, to, you know, to, to uh, help, because this is a new technology, these are obvious, sure. you know, concerns and questions. So phages have been used as a system of medicine. It's called phage therapy as a system of medicine in Eastern Europe and Russia for about a hundred years now. Uh, the reason why it hasn't been adopted in the West is, is 
because more of a political history rather than scientific reasons. So the Second World War, you know, communism, the Iron Curtain have all a role to play in this story. Um, the other thing is that phages, like I said, you know, we're awash in phages, billions of these things pass through our day, our uh, sort of body every day. And C. acne phages have been specifically found to be associated with healthy skin. So if anything, um, you know, that inherent safety, the fact that our skin is, is always or is routinely in contact with these phages. And in fact, healthy people who have healthy skin have more contact with this phage than other people uh, is actually the best kind of safety evidence. Uh, of course, we've done, you know, all of the product safety tests and assays that, that need to be done to launch a product to test its safety. Uh, but just the, the inherent safety of this technology is the fact that it, it exists in real life and it, only, it exists in concert with healthy people. Oh, that's, that's I mean, it's interesting to, 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 I mean, hundreds of years, that's a long time for us to not be taking advantage of that. And, and I don't think it'll surprise anyone that politics gets in the way as it always is the issue. Uh, but uh, Doc Mock, I'm sure there's something in that big, beautiful brain of yours that you want to talk about with the gut skin microbiome. Yeah, I mean, you know, just going back to the gut, as I always do. Um, and in our patient, you know, dysbiosis, right, dysregulation of your good microbiome occurs in people with acne. And in particular, I think one of the most interesting things is that, you know, we think of a, a group of uh, bacteria called Firmicutes and Bacteroides as, um, you know, kind of this interplay, good and bad, yin and yang, um, Jedi and, and Sith, and that the Firmicutes are the ones that are craving carbohydrates, make us gain weight, they're the bad guys, and that Bacteroides are the good guys, you know, we need more of those, but it's kind of the opposite in, um, in acne, we have a lot of bacteroides, which are the good guys and not enough firmicutes, the, the bad guys. And so they've actually done studies where they've given microbiome replenishment through a probiotic formulation, better diet, cleaner diet. And they've found resolution of acne in humans. This is not just animal research. And so I think it's, it's interesting the role that our ability to digest carbohydrate and the impact of certain hormones like insulin sensitivity may have in this condition as well. So th there's a lot to be said, um, but I think we got to go to a commercial break, don't we, Jackie P? Yeah, it's about that time. Yeah. So everyone stay tuned. We will be back because I still have questions as usual. We're here with Doc Mock, Doc Varma, and we'll see you very shortly. What's going on, Maximal Beings? It's Doc Mock here. Many of you are returning to the gym now, but some are not going back. Regardless of what you plan, Rogue has got the right gear to fit your needs. I personally own a barbell set and love it. The black op shorts are sweat resistant and flexible for getting deep in your squats. Head on over to MaximalBeing.com Rogue for our referral link. Order three items and they ship for free. And as usual, it's Doc Mock and I'm here to maximize your pathway to wellness. If you're stuck at home and cannot make it to the grocery store, delivery may be the best way to stay clean and healthy. Instacart is the national leader in the direct to home delivery service. With numerous major chains and food from smaller stores, you can get those local veggies sent directly to your doorstep. Head on over to maximalbeing.com slash Instacart and maximize your nutrition today. Hello, hello, hello. Maximal Beans, it is I, Jackie P, your favorite layman. We're back. Uh, we have Dr. Varma here talking about the skin microbiome, which I thought the microbiome only applied to your gut. So this episode should be called Jackie P learning basically something every 10 seconds. Um, but it's like every episode, really. So I guess it's not different. So Dr. Varma, right? So, right. So talk to me about, right, where we say the phages, right? They are eating the bad bacteria that causes acne, right? Um, you know, and there's a probiotic, right? For, I know, for your your tummy, right? And there's postbiotics, right? Does, does that work the same when it comes to the skin microbiome? And uh, Absolutely. Uh, well, 
So if you think of the, the different microbiota in, in our, the different parts of our body, right? They're very, very different. Uh, so the microbiome for your gut uh, is completely different and the, the beings in it or the, the uh, organisms in it are completely different to, to what's on your skin. Uh, for example, one of the really interesting parts of the skin microbiome is, you know, they're, they're gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Um, they, they have different sort of evolutionary sort of trees and um, it's basically how we classify bacteria. The gut has both gram negative and gram positive bacteria. For some reason, the skin only has gram positive bacteria. It has not a single gram negative species. And usually if it has a gram negative species, it's a signal that something is wrong. Um, so you can think of the gut as kind of a, like a, a, a tropical rainforest. The skin is kind of like a desert, right? Uh, now, obviously you wouldn't take a fern and try to grow it in a desert, just as you wouldn't take a cactus and, and put it inside a tropical rainforest and expect it to grow. Uh, and so although probiotics can be used and phages technically fall under that definition, although they're not a bacterium, but all probiotics are not bacteria, there are, there are yeasts that are probiotics too. Uh, but yes, probiotics can potentially work in on the skin. The problem is that a lot of probiotic skincare, so-called, uses yogurt bacteria. Uh, now, yogurt bacteria, lactobacillus bifidobacteria, you know, some pediococcus, et cetera, um, they're great for the gut. They, they do a lot of great stuff. Um, they plug into the gut kind of signaling pathways and do their magic. Uh, they don't do very much on the skin at all. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of skincare out there uses dead yogurt bacteria, so it's even less effective. <laughs> It's kind of like going to the supermarket, yeah. looking at two tubs of yogurt. One says billions of live active cultures. The other one says not a single live bacteria guaranteed. <laughs> I mean, which one are you going to pick up? So, you know, why would you use dead yogurt bacteria on your skin? It just never made sense to me. Contains placebo, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's placebo. right. Placebo, yeah. Okay. And, you know, so the the... So, you know, I know we, we say we didn't, you didn't just put these phages in a bottle, right? Um, but, you know, what would you say is, like, who out there is your, the number one person, right? Acne is, like, obvious, right? Someone has things going on and they want to work on it, right? Is it just your face, right? If you have acne on your face, I know folks who may have acne on your back. Is it the same thing? Is it different? Can they use it for both? Yeah, there are three different types of skin microbiomes that we have. Um, one is the dry skin, which is the skin on our, you know, torso, hands, feet, um, our legs and arms, right? Then there's the wet microbiome, which is our like armpits, our moist areas, our armpits, our, our groin region. Uh, and then there's the oily microbiome, which is our, our face, our upper chest and our upper back. And so uh, back knee or chest acne, they're all of the same type. Uh, there's also different types of acne on the face, right? There's mild, moderate, severe, you know, cystic, there's hormonal acne. Um, and so all of these different types of acne are um, caused by the same underlying cause, an overgrowth of C acnes in that particular part of your uh, body, right? Obviously no one gets acne on their elbow or their knee. It's just not a thing. Uh, the, the small caveat is some people, and this is very rare, this has somehow caught on, but it's a very rare condition, fungal acne. It's not actually acne, it's actually dermatitis caused by a fungus, uh, and it's characterized by itching. So if you have acne that's, that makes you really want to itch intensely, um, it's not acne, go see a dermatologist and you know, square that off. Uh, the other thing is there are other types of dermatitis, which is basically bumps on your skin or inflammation on your skin that is not acne. That's basically what dermatitis is. Um, and we recently had a case where we had a customer who was using our product. Uh, it worked for a while, but then it got worse. And then we were looking back at their history and, and they had tried antibiotics, benzoyl peroxide, pretty much everything under the sun except for retinoids. And 
nothing worked, nothing had worked. And I said, wait, you know, those things work. They're very harsh and they cause other problems with your skin, but they do work. So then they went to the doctor and realized that it's actually a deeper issue and it has nothing to do with acne. So um, those are kind of the, the exceptions really, but the vast, vast majority of people are, are people just have acne vulgaris and using this product will address all of those. So whether you have mild, moderate, hormonal, et cetera, it all uh, can be solved with, with Viva. That's, that's good to know. And the second you said that the none of the skin regimens worked and those are deeper issue, my flag went off in my brain saying, I'm sure Doc Mock has something to add to this. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like, you know, Dr. Varma, your deductive reasoning skills are on point. It's like, that's where us as clinicians go to. It's like, wait a minute, you know, you have acne, it hasn't responded to anything. It's probably not actually acne. Let's question and expand our differential diagnoses. I saw a young woman recently that had complained to me that she had acne her whole life and it spread to her elbows, which was interesting. And so me being the GI nerd that I am, you know, bells went off and and I was like, we are going to test you for celiac disease right now. So sure enough, like her celiac serologies were positive, her biopsies were positive that I did on the endoscopy. And what she had was not acne, but can look like it. It's called dermatitis herpetiformis, which is completely linked with celiac disease and nothing else. So back to you, Jack P. Wow. Thanks for that ad. Folks out there, if you're having acne sprites of places they shouldn't, Talk to your other doctor as well, because he might find the, the option. <laughs> um, so, I mean, Dr. Varma, honestly, um, I'm going to, you know, your the treatment sounds like it, it's, it's definitely been run through the test. And also, I I enjoy uh, the fact that you, you are uh, the guy who says, oh, well, this isn't working. It's not me. Let's find the real solution right and say okay this isn't working let's find why it isn't and isn't hey you know what my you know my 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 sauce works for everyone right so i wanted to give you kudos for that because i know there's a lot of egos in this world and folks who have solutions to problems sometimes can't see that perhaps their solution isn't right so i thank you along with that uh, uh that patient to figure out their other stuff going on so i have some very rapid fire questions for you some that you may know are coming some you probably don't know because they're they came to my head in the last couple seconds. Um, so the first is, um, what is your favorite health book, and why? Oh, um, so I love to cook, uh, and one of my favorite health books is called "An Everlasting Meal" by Tamar Adler. Uh, she is a protege of um, Alice White, uh, who is a very famous Bay Area chef. Um, and her philosophy, the philosophy of the book is basically, you know, when we cook, it's about, oh, I saw this recipe. I'm going to make a list. I'm going to go to the grocery store, you know, spend half an hour picking out stuff. And then I'm going to have these exotic ingredients that I take a teaspoon out of and never use again. Um, her philosophy is uh, start boiling a pot of water, uh, go to your pantry, see what's there, go to your uh you know, fridge, see what's there and then improvise. Um, and so she has basically these, it's not really a cookbook. It's really a series of essays. And within those essays are embedded recipes. Uh, I think the first, uh, first chapter is called how to boil water. And so she's like, you boil a pot of water. What can you do with that? Right. Uh, what kind of vegetables can you cook? You know, then the second chapter is how to make an egg fly, all, all the things you can do with eggs and so on and so forth. So it's not specifically about fitness, but I feel like fitness so, is so much how what we eat and how we eat uh, that that reading that really changed the way I approached food and, and health as well. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, as, as you all know, if you've listened to more than 45 seconds of the podcast, we stress all the time, you cannot outwork a bad diet. So yep. fantastic. I will take that answer, Dr. Barma, because it's a fantastic one. Speaking of working out and exercising, what is your favorite workout? Um, I like high intensity interval training. Um, there was uh, some research uh, several years ago that said that if you do high intensity interval training or HIT, 
like for five minutes a day, you it it has the same benefit as if you were on a treadmill for what forty five minutes or two hours, and your heart health, etc., you know, can improve so much. So I've been doing this ten minute workout for what six seven years now, every every day, Monday to Friday, uh, just ten minutes, and it's improved my health a, a great deal. Another, yeah. <laughs> another, <laughs> another very Dr. Varma has listened to our past podcast answer. Yeah, and it's now. <laughs> okay. It. Great minds think alike. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and the last pre, you know, question you knew about, uh, what is the craziest diet that you've heard of or been on? Oh man, uh, I've done. I've I've actually done some pretty crazy stuff. I've I've of course I've tried like keto, etc. It, it was great, but I was just always hungry, and and it, it's fine, but it's not for the long term. Certainly not for me. Uh, I've also done some like fasts, like I've done a water fast for seven days, uh, which was very interesting. Taught me a lot about myself, uh, and and about my body, uh, and it also kind of did a bit of a reset. Um, I think vegan diets are interesting uh, because to my knowledge, there really isn't any native culture that is purely vegan. So I'm from India. Uh, in India, vegetarianism is very widespread. Uh, majority of Indians are vegetarian uh, and, the, and the food is great. It's fantastic, um, but it doesn't really, uh, I mean, it uses uh, like, it uses a lot of milk, a lot of milk products. And I think that animal fat part is really important. So again, you know, some people, for, for some people like keto changes their lives. If you have certain medical conditions like, uh, like epilepsy and, and certain others it makes a huge difference. Uh, so like knowing your body and knowing what diet works for you um, and whether or not it aligns with certain values that you may have or other people have, it's, it's all about listening to your body and being healthy. Sheesh. That's, a, that's, I mean, it's, it, he's, you're on a roll, Dr. Varma. I feel like you're just <laughs> literally, it's almost as if you did the research and then like listen to our podcast and like, okay, what is the best response I can give to this to basically <laughs> reinforce everything that Max Mobian has been talking about for, I mean, what, two years? I don't know how long this has been going on. Paleo, keto, vegan, and carnivore. Maybe you've tried them all, but did you have success? Are you still doing that diet? Turns out, there's not just one diet right for one particular person. By understanding how your body works and the relationship behind your body's workings and these diets, you can then approach the perfect plan for you. In the Perfect Human Diet course, we talk to you about your body's inner workings and the pros and cons of each plan. We discuss how our ancestors ate and have eaten and lay a framework to tailoring a plan that is perfect for you. To learn more about the Perfect Human Diet course, head to MaximalBeing.com courses to find out more. And as always, I'm Doc Mock, and I'm here to maximize your health. You cannot supplement your way to health, but there are things that we need to add to our lives that can maximize our pathway to wellness. The American diet is virtually devoid of omega-3 fatty acids, which play a major role in cardiovascular disease, gut permeability, and mental health. Personally, I take omega-3s every night and iHerb is the best place for clean, natural sources of supplements. I love the ZenWise Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplement, which is free of fish burps and good for the environment. Head on over to MaximalBeing.com slash iHerb, that's I-H-E-R-B, and enter the code B as in boy, D as in dog, B as in boy, 5528, and receive 10% off your orders for all supplements. Maximize your supplements with iHerb. I've got some other random uh, questions as well. Just a few, and then I'll let you go, I promised. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, right? You talked about acne, right? I love Dr. Pimple Popper, right? That's my girl. I know people think it's gross, but... Not everyone thinks it's gross because she's not famous for no reason, right? Just because I'm interested. Is that good for you, right? Like popping pimples and getting all that stuff out, right? Like I can't help it. I pop everything that shows up on my face. I know I shouldn't, but like, 
what what's what's the deal with that, Doctor Farmer? Jackie P, you are blessed with <laughs> fantastic skin, and oh, we're, we're not all like that. So, <laughs> so I would say, yeah, if you're not a trained professional, don't pop your pimples uh, unless you love having acne scars. Um, Doctor Pimple Popper, you know, does it like you know, like a professional, and she knows what she's doing, and you know, she won't. She, she she has the tools she has the expertise to do it but yeah don't don't try this at home kids ah perfect okay so this is so she definitely should have hey the pimple popping is for professional don't go dice it into the mole on your friend's back right no yeah okay Please. and again it's <laughs> you know it's it's like uh if you have to go to a professional to, to get pimples popped, et cetera, it rapidly, you realize this really isn't like, I, I can't go make a doctor's appointment every time a pimple shows up. Right. So there's some self-care, some, some just skincare aspects of it where you have to deal with it day to day. And then if it gets to a point where you need to pop pimples and there's a person for that, you go for it. Gotcha. Um, and, um, and, and this, this might be under your umbrella. It might not because my wife and I, this is a very personal question. My wife and I always argue this. Uh, I don't use sunscreen ever. I'm like, I'm a tropical person. I'm of Haitian descent. D does it matter if you, if you got, you know, more melanin than your counterparts to put on sunscreen? Like, you know, uh, I feel you. Uh, I don't put on sunscreen either probably as much as I should um, as I'm getting older I'm realizing that like yeah putting moisturizer putting sunscreen especially if you're going to be in the sun all day even though you know you're not gonna um, get sunburned right is is probably good uh, it's basically you know sunscreen or a lack of sunscreen will affect how your skin ages you have wonderful skin Oh, you know, stop and people. It, Dr. Pharma. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it's your Zoom setting, Jackie P. Maybe you've just done He's the glowing. little touch up. Yeah, I have, a in, I have an Instagram filter add-on. It's only twenty uh, bucks. I'll I'll send it to cat, you. He has cat eyes too. <laughs> <laughs> he does have great skin, though, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and so yeah, it's it's just uh, if you don't put on sunscreen, you will, I guess, pay for it down the line. But people with darker skin. Uh, have that going for them you know we can take a lot more uh and my wife her she's very fair and she she doesn't even tan she just goes from like white to pink to back to white with freckles you Damn. know <laughs> <laughs> so so whenever we go out it's like me and my kids are like a pit crew and we're just like face and hands and, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like polishing like, i got it covered yeah exactly and then every 15 minutes because it's like <laughs> she yeah. will just get sunburned <laughs> like anything uh that's 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 classic so you know speaking of sunscreen actually and this wasn't a planned question but you just reminded me my my wife is way better at it than i am but you know there's always like an article oh you have to avoid this chemical or you have to avoid this chemical this can you know like when it comes to sunscreen or even you know makeup for folks who put makeup on or lotion right you know, like, what should we be avoiding? You said 500 ingredients, right? So, like, you know, should we looking for, like, simple products, right? Like, if it's a face mask that only has avocado in it, right? Like, the less ingredients, the better. Like, what's a good rule of thumb for, for those types of, you know, topical items? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it on the head. Uh, if lesser is better. Um, I would say drink a lot of water. Um obviously stress has a big role to play in how our skin looks right uh so get a lot of exercise go outdoors um the more contact your skin has with nature the better uh and then you know some people have more sensitive skin than others so for them like it's really a journey of finding out which exact ingredients work best and which don't um there's actually this really interesting article uh, which said you know old when people get older there's a lot of systemic inflammation and there's we don't know where it's coming from. So these scientists, I, and I don't even know how they figured out to do this. They said, let's take uh, two sets of older people and put lotion on one set and don't moisturize the other. Just putting moisturizer, right? 
after a few months, they measured their inflammation levels and the people who had regularly used moisture, moisturizer on their skin had way lower levels of systemic inflammation. Uh, and it was just like, oh my God, the skin is such a big um, sort of uh, source of inflammation, especially as you get older. Uh, and who knew just moisturizing it again, not putting sunscreen or anything, just a simple moisturizer has this huge effect. So go oh. figure. You know, Jackie P just getting into the functional medicine side of things, we look for these toxins and products. And so, you know, there is actually a very popular UV blocker that just got pulled from the market a few months ago. And it's because they found oxybenzone which is actually a, a chemical in a lot of UV blockers, which will lower sperm counts in men and cause fertility issues in women. And so oxybenzone, benzofernone, and, and also parabens are another one, which probably a lot of the listeners have heard of those things, all no good and very common in a lot of skincare products. Wow. This is, I have to say, I, I learned a lot, as always, from... From you, Doc Mock, Dr. Varma, you've brought up so many interesting points. Now, like, I'm looking at the winter season as a whole different season because now we're all drier. We're all ashy. So you all got to make sure we stay moisturized because your overall health might depend on it. <laughs> like, what? Who would have thought? What a day. Well, I've got nothing else to ask you, Dr. Varma. Well, I probably do, but, you know, I want to make sure that we keep this under seven hours. So, uh <laughs> Doc Mock, anything to add? Anything you want to summarize it up for us and take us out? Yeah, I mean, pay attention to your skin. If something's new on your skin, it is your body, your health that is screaming for help. And go see your local healthcare provider to investigate that problem because it may mean your life. It may be a cancer. Who knows? Um, take care of your skin, you know, whether it be hot, dry, whether you be melanin enhanced or whether you be melanin deficient like myself. And, um, you know, I think don't abuse the microbiome, whether it be within your gut or within your skin. As always, I'm Doc Mock. I'm a therapeutic endoscopist, functional medicine doctor here with Jackie P and Dr. Varma. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. And as always, we are here to maximize your health. And Dr. Varma, let people know where they can find you. Yeah, so RFH Technology is a brand called Phyla. Uh, it has a, an acne system that gives a completely different approach to acne um, without the side effects or the relapses. Uh, you can find us at phylabiotics.com um, and on social media at phylabiotics on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And can you spell Phyla as well? For right, Phyla is P-H-Y-L-A. Thank you very much. It was such a pleasure, Dr. Varma, Jackie P. You crushed it. I, I, this is give. I'm taking those flowers and I'm giving them to Dr. Varma because Dr. Yeah. Varma, you crushed it. Yeah, oh, well man. done. Great analysis. Check them out, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. What's going on, Maximal Beings? Doc Mock here. If you haven't done so already, leave us a comment and hit the subscribe button. Let your friends and family know. That way we can get the word out and continue to bash the bro science.